I came to Berkeley in the late 70s, and I was planning to be an astrophysicist. I was very inspired by Carl Sagan, Albert Einstein, and Stephen Hawking. And I knew Berkeley would be a great place to be. But I've stayed for more than 30 years because of Art Rosenfeld. I'm going to tell you a little about Art Rosenfeld. Art passed away this year, just a couple of months ago. And he left behind a, a tremendous legacy that gives us the first generation of the energy efficiency agenda in the building sector. And this is very important for our country, our state, and around the world, because buildings use uh, more energy use than any sector and more greenhouse gases. So we care not just about how we produce energy, but how we consume it. Art was known for great achievements in energy efficiency in windows and in lighting systems and in things like refrigerators. And what's happening now is we're changing dramatically. As we talk about how we both produce and consume energy, it's no longer just about static energy efficiency, but dynamic energy management. So as we move away from a time where we had more and more power plants to supply the energy for growing loads, we now have distributed systems and we have intermittent variable supply. So we're producing and supplying our energy with renewable systems. California had a great achievement just a couple months ago this year where over 50% of the electricity on a single day for three hours was from solar. Now that's a great achievement, and we should be celebrating that. But one of our challenges is what that means when we have created something that is now famous around the world called the duck curve. <laughs> As we have more and more solar in the middle of the day, we actually have less load in some times of the year. So we have too much solar. That's already happening in Hawaii. And as we think about clean energy systems, we have to think about both how we produce and consume our energy. The belly of the duck means that there's a lot of electricity available, and it's becoming cheaper in the middle of the day. For decades, we've been concerned about time of use, and we try to use less in the middle of the day and more at night. But we're actually now very interested in using more during certain times of the day, it's very different than what we've been doing. So the challenge and the solution is related to what we ha do in buildings. Buildings can have flexible consumption or flexible loads. And those prices in the middle of the day, in the spring, when there's a lot of solar, is something that can be sent to a device in your home. So the most important thing to remember is that the way we use energy today is going to change dramatically. So we are going to be able to understand what is using energy on home, how much and when. It's when you use it that matters. The technologies in this picture show you water heaters, refrigerators, uh, dishwashers, air conditioners, and maybe local storage in a photovoltaic. We're developing the technology here in Berkeley to control those loads, to see the loads. We don't see them today. You pay the bill once a month and you go home and Things like Nest thermostats are enabling us to have what are called rush hour programs. So you actually use less around dinner time when that duck curve was peaking. So that the total load minus the solar and the wind is that, that curve. And we really want to fill that duck belly. So we want low carbon buildings, part of a low carbon grid. And we're going to be using our energy very differently. So these technologies uh, are going to be communicating with the grid today. Those technologies are doing their own thing. And we turn them on when we want, and we turn them off when we want. But in the future, we want an integrated system that's automated. And we want people to be able to guarantee the energy performance of those systems. So we're really excited about the activities across the Berkeley campus and at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, working across this multidisciplinary area. So it's a critical part of achieving a future vision of a low-carbon future. Uh, involving not just producing the energy, but consuming the energy, energy efficiency, and dynamic load control. And these are the technologies that you'll be seeing in the future. Thank you.